Good evening. Hey, how are you this evening? How you doing? Oh, I'm fighting off a little laryngitis because of, uh, you know, all the pollen and everything. It's that time of year, but uh, I will... I will make it, I think, and luckily you get to do all of the heavy lifting of the story time tonight, so I'm looking forward to what I'm sure will be a fantastic tale. Well, before we get into that, let's let's talk about the game board tonight. It, um, I can't help but notice that something's a little different. It, it does. Than, uh, it, does look, it does look a little different. Why is that? So uh, now the Roman blocks are red instead of gray. Now, if we've been playing this game in person, physically, at this point, we've been using the original game pieces from the core game uh, until this scenario where the game tells us to go ahead and use the new red Roman blocks included in the expansion. And the reason for that is uh, due to some changes in how the Roman military is made up. Oh, interesting. Let's uh, go back a couple weeks uh, to our... That disastrous Roman loss at Orasio. Um, if you recall, when we were talking about that loss, up until that point, the uh, Roman military had only been comprised of landowners. And after a century of, of almost constant conflict, that has taken a toll on the Rom- Roman population. And after the massive losses inflicted by the Germanic tribes in the... Uh, Battle of Horatio, the Roman forces are depleted. So they are they are in dire straits, and they are just waiting for this Germanic horde to come rushing into mainland Italy. But if you'll recall, during the negotiations with the Germans, they had expressed a desire to head south into Hispania, or modern-day Spain. And after that battle, that's exactly what they did. So that bought the Romans a bit of time to catch their breath, to regroup, and to make some changes. And what, pray tell, were those changes? Well, so the Roman Senate elected a man by the name of Gaius Marius to be one of their consuls. Marius has just successfully prosecuted a campaign in North Africa against the Numidians. So he is an experienced general. And then, well, upon his return, he takes it upon himself to initiate some sweeping changes in the Roman military. First off, he argues to the Senate that you don't need to be a property owner to be a Roman citizen, so why do you need to be a property owner to be a Roman legionary? Now, up to that point, the the feeling was that a property owner would have a bit more skin in the game, that he would fight harder to defend his home and... He would be reluctant to turn against the Roman Senate um, for fear of losing his property. But at this point, as we just we I've stated, they just don't have the manpower in in that in that property owning class. So uh, the Roman Senate agrees, and they will allow Marius to pull from the poor population. So when he sends his recruiters to these landless citizens, a lot of them jump at the chance because this is an opportunity as a legionary they get to see the known world you know most people barely leave their home village and now they'd be given the opportunity to albeit under dangerous conditions see the world there's also the chance for enriching yourself we've often discussed how after these battles the roman legions would loot and pillage the surrounding countryside so if you don't have anything the idea of 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 looting the battlefield is pretty appealing. So Marius swells his ranks with these poor Roman citizens. And that's where he encounters his next problem. Generally, because the legionary is made up of landowners, they bring their own equipment to battle. The state only provides them with their sword and their shield, but their armor and all of their other equipment is provided by the legionary himself. Obviously, the the poor and the landless don't have the resources to provide their own equipment. So Marius organizes and purchases in bulk new equipment for his entire legionary, standardizing the equipment that all of his forces are using. He's had experience in his battles 
in North Africa, seeing in the field which equipment worked and which equipment was useless. So he decides on a mixture of of light armor, chain mail, sword, shield, and up, he improves the pilum, which is the Roman javelin. So Marius actually uh, improved the pilum or the javelin that the legionaries carry. He made it basically disposable. They made, he turned them into lighter, one-use weapons that once they hit, they would bend so the enemies couldn't pick them back up and throw them back at the legionary. Oh, that's cool. The other thing that Marius did is, as well as standardizing the military equipment that the legions carried, he also went through and standardized their personal equipment as well. Basically, he made it so that every man carried all of his gear wrapped in a blanket on a stick, almost hobo style, eliminating the, the need for the vast wagon trains that would follow the legions around. So that meant his legion could respond more quickly um, because they had all of their essential gear with them. So they could leave their baggage trains behind to respond quickly well, because th- at this point, the Republic is huge. You know, so if, if there's problems uh, over in, in Greece or Hispania, you know, that takes them weeks to get there. So by lightening their loads, they can get there faster. The, all of these reforms greatly swell the ranks of legionary, but it does create a subtle shift in the allegiances of of the military. As I said, you know, Gaius himself probably paid for some of the equipment for these soldiers. So now this is one of those one of those ticks that uh, we'll see the Republic slowly start shifting to an empire as the legionaries become more loyal to individuals rather than the state, which is exactly what the Senate feared originally. So, with his newly formed legions uh, ready to go, Marius and his forces march north to confront their Germanic hordes. But as I said, they did not march into Italy. They went south into uh, Hispania. So this gave Marius some time. He waged a few quick battles with some local barbarian tribe that had allied with the Cimbri and the Teutonis, uh, which are the two major tribes that are making up this this horde invasion. So with a few victories under their belt, that greatly boosted the confidence of Marius's new army. Meanwhile, down in Hispania, uh, those German tribes got a little bit more than they bargained for as the um, Hispanic tribes ally and force them out of the peninsula. So at this point, the tribes decide to turn their sights onto Italy because they think Italy's pretty easy pickings because they've already beaten a few Roman armies. The vast horde decides to split up with the Cimbri forces crossing the Alps to attack Italy through the Alpine passes, and while the Teutonis and their allies, the Ambronis, Besides, they're going to punch through Transalpine Gaul, which is sort of that, that southern area in modern-day France into Italy. Marius splits his forces with Marius marching to face the Teutones and the other half going north to defend the Alpine passes. So it's 102 BC, and this vast Germanic horde has entered the Rhone Valley. They have over 130,000 warriors between the two tribes, plus women, children, baggage trains. I mean, it is a horde, and it moves very slowly. So this gives Marius a bit of time. So Marius constructs a fortified camp. So when the German hordes get there, they try to draw the Romans out. They spend days hurling insults and, and... making rude gestures and trying to incite the Romans, and the Romans won't budge. They stay within their fort. Eventually, the Romans get the Germans get frustrated, and they attack the fort, and they are beaten back by the Romans. The horde just moves on. Like, well, if they're not going to come out of their fort, fine, we'll just leave them. Now, as I said, it's a horde, and it takes days for it to pass by this fort. But once they've passed, Marius and his forces quit the fort, and start trailing the uh, Teutone Horde. Every time the Horde catches sight of the trailing Romans, the Romans quickly build a fortified camp 
and the dirt and the horde decides we're not even going to bother. At this point, they have made it to the banks of what were called the Aque Sexite. And Marius constructs another camp, this time away from the river, while the Ambronis, which are the, the minority forces in this force, set up their camp right there on the riverbank. And they commence to party, getting drunk, skinny dipping. It's, it's an all-out rager for them. But basically, it's Florida spring break. Because they think they're going to beat the Romans easily. So they're not worried. So they're already celebrating their victory. Because the Roman camp is so far away from the river, they send some of their camp followers down there to fetch water. And again, as we've seen in previous battles, that's where the fighting is. Not another damn mule. (laughs) Well, this time it's just um, some drunken barbarians get a little upset that their rager is interrupted by a bunch of servants and, and people trying to collect water. So they give chase. The followers flee back towards their camp. And almost immediately, the Roman auxiliaries respond. You know, so these are the local levies that have been inducted into the Roman forces, not the proper legionaries. So when these drunken barbarians see these auxiliaries arrayed against them, they start to shout their tribal name, Ambronis, Ambronis. Well, it turns out that these auxiliaries are also historically derived from that tribe, and they think it's one of their guys' changes. So they start chanting Ambronis. And this creates such a din that it alerts the entire legionary. So the, leg- the legions drop their equipment, stop building their camp, you know, pick up their swords and javelins, and rush into battle. So as the legionaries rush in, the auxiliaries fall back, and the legionaries just unleash volley after volley of those pilum javelins. It has the effect of, of pinning the German shields together because they link their shields to form a shield wall. But as these javelins punch through like a stapler, they lock the shields together, making them practically useless. So these drunken barbarians drop their shields and charge headlong into this Roman army, and they just get cut down. The few survivors flee the field, and the Romans begin to celebrate their victory. But Marius, you know, immediately puts a stop to that. He's like, you just beat the drunken fringe. The real army is across the river. And as soon as those guys get back, they're going to come for us. So they immediately rush to finish fortifying their camp. Fortunately for them, the Teutonians don't respond right away. And to buy some time... Marius sends out a detachment to harass the German camp. Basically, he sends some guys to be a rude neighbor. So they go and make a ruckus at night, keeping the German forces up all night long by cat calls, blowing horns, you know. Bass. I, I yes, lots of bass. With, with the oh. situation where you have a, a noisy neighbor <laughs> yes. who plays their music loudly at all hours. I am quite familiar, yes. <laughs> the next day, the Germans are exhausted, and they decide to sleep in. So this gives Marius some time to pick his battlefield. And he picks a nearby field with some elevated high ground and some nearby forest. He sends 3,000 of his forces out to hide in the forest while he arrays the rest of his legion up on the hilltop. Then, as the Teutones cross the river to face them, now remember, this horde is nearly double the size of his legionary force. Marius orders all of his camp followers and their baggage trains to march up the hill as well, create a huge cloud of dust and giving the illusion that the legionary force is much larger than it actually is. This unnerves the Teutones a bit, so they decide to hold some of their forces in reserve, and basically they split their army in two. So the Germans, they send the first wave up the hill, and once again, the legionaries just rain down a volley of their pullums. Again, making their shields useless by pinning them together, and really just sort of just, just cutting down the charging forces. Once that first wave is defeated, right as the second wave begins to charge, that's when Marius signals, 
his hidden forces to attack the barbarians from behind. And that just devastates the remaining Teutonates. And they break up, lose cohesion, and begin to flee the battlefield. And that's when the massacre begins. In the end, about 200,000 Germans are slaughtered or captured. Um, as the, the Roman legionaries make their way back to the Teutonic camp, they begin fighting the barbarian women, who wind up to be almost equal to their male counterparts and their ferociousness. But eventually they're beaten and captured too. And then the majority of the women, upon learning that they're going to be sold into slavery, um, actually wind up committing suicide, as they'd rather die free than live as a slave. So this winds up to be a great Roman victory and pretty much smashes and wipes out the Detone's tribe. But, as we'll probably see in later battles, the Kimbri tribe is still out there, and they certainly have their eyes set on, on Italy and Rome. So we'll see how Marius responds to those in the future. But for tonight, we'll uh, focus on Marius's victory here, and why don't you explain how these new Roman forces are going to work? Certainly. Uh, I will open up the, uh, the War Council here. And we'll just kind of go over it. Uh, this is a six-banner contest this evening. I will start as the Germanic tribes. So I have Tutobodus, or Tutobodus as my single leader. Tutobod. Tutobod, yes. Uh, my single uh, leader, which that, uh, that could be a hamstring. Um... I got five command cards, but I do get to go first, and it certainly seems like I have an overwhelming force. Peter will start with the Romans, and he has, of course, the a very efficient Marius, and hidden off in the woods, he's got Marcellus, who was played by Russell Crowe in this film. Uh, six command cards will be what he has for his Roman efficiency. And uh, the special rules, talking about that, is the... Um, is specifically about how he activates Marcellus and his ambush. If he plays a leadership of any kind or an Order Light Troops command card, then he can start bringing those guys onto the board from that map edge. Um, if it is a leadership any section or Order Light Troops, then he can bring them anywhere he likes. Otherwise, if he plays a specific leader section activation, then it has to be in that particular flank. Um, and their movement, they actually start moving from off the board, so their, whatever their movement allotment is, the first step onto the map does count as one space. And then he can also choose to put Marcellus with any of those units there. Uh, however, if they have to retreat, they have to start retreating towards the bottom of the map. So as long as that, that uh, Germanic line is there, that could present some problems for them. So... I'm very curious to see how that's going to go, because we, we've had the breakout with the units on multiple sides of the map before, and uh, that that was not nearly as bloody as it could have been, but it certainly was fraught with some peril. Uh, and then the second special rule there is Marius Legion's rule is in effect. Um, I don't have that immediately handy. Well, uh, I have my rule book in front of me. Fantastic. Why don't you tell them about the so, Marius so Legions? So the Marius rules, which are the red blocks... Um, effectively, all Roman heavy infantry and medium infantry are armed with their pilum and their sword. Um, so this means now that all heavy and medium infantry also have a ranged combat weapon, and they get to roll one die for ranged combat with a range of two hexes. And of course, they cannot perform. It. They are, you know, when using the pilums, they are subject to all the same rules as, as other missile troops. So they can't. Fight, they can't shoot at anybody on the hex next to them. Um, they can't shoot and then get engaged in melee. Right. So, but but every every Roman force now is considered, or at least footmen, is considered to be a missile troop. Great. And, um, so, uh, Dark in the Skies takes yeah. on a whole new meaning sure with does. the Marius Legion. It sure does. Um, opening the, uh, the terrain information, just as a refresher, we've got hills, We've got woods. Hills will probably be the, the most active terrain feature that is contested today. So uh, units battle uphill with a max of two dice. And of course that can be 
uh, altered by card play. And uh, units on the hill battling down or battling from hill to hill, um, specifically the uh, they, they will battle with three dice if they're foot units, or two dice if they are mounted units. So those mounted cavalry on the hill will battle down or hill to hill with two dice only. And of course it blocks line of sight, so for those pillum, that could be a factor if you're trying to throw over those hills. That's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, and the forest uh, foot units or light units can still move in and battle. Um, units battling into or out of a forest hex are capped at two dice, of course, but that can be modified. And ranged attacks shooting uh, into units in that forest is capped at one die. So, um, just because those things are thunking into tree trunks and, you know, not very effective. So those are our two terrain units tonight. Um, this is exciting. I love when we get new changes in, in the paradigm of the game. So I will uh, I will draw my five cards since I'm going first. I have my five cards. And I have my six, and as always, good luck. Good luck to you. Um, beat me to it. All right. I've got... What an eclectic hand. Uh, same. Same here. Um, but the question is, what do I wish to do with it? Let's do a, a line command. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. And activate those foot units. And we'll try something a little different here. Mm. Yeah, let's try that. Interesting. Interesting. I'll respond with this. I'll let fly with a pair of dice. Ooh. And of course, the horses are the first ones to get hit. And then uh, over here, another pair of dice. Hmm. Not so much there. And I guess I could have had somebody in the middle, too. Um, army is pretty well balanced on either side. I, I think I'm good with that. Okay. Try two on the right. attack those light bows who can of course evade for their lives if they wish hmm. no chance of wiping them out but uh, you know yeah that, that's that's what I'm weighing here I think we'll stand alright then so we'll have three dice coming at you and we will get two hits two dice back and another hit. All right, then. Totally worth it. My second coordinated attack card. That Marius is a military genius. All the circles don't line up, but... So I'm going to move this nameless leader here. Um, did you say that was Russell Crowe? Is that who that is? Uh, no, I was saying Marcellus was, because he's off with the Cal... Cavalry in the woods there. Okay. So I can move him down there, right? Yes. And then as a unit, can they... So he has to go he... He has to go where they're going to end up. In order gotcha. to... Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and leaders have a movement of three on their own, right? Correct. 
And can they move through friendly units? I don't recall. Yes, they can. I don't can. ever really move my leaders by themselves. Yes, they can. One, two, three. One, two. All right. I'll start over here. I'll let fly with two more dice. Nothing. Then over here, try and finish off your medium mounted unit. Three dice, both leaders support. Got him. Just barely got him. Yeah. There we go. Of course, you can advance and move a second time if you like. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good, good point. I'll advance and then take that hill. We're both being ultra cautious, aren't we? We are. Um, because I'm, I'm. I'm trying to plan, <laughs> and that's what I get for trying to plan. Um, okay, we're going to do this. And... Okay. So, we'll do the light versus the light bow first for two dice. I ain't got nowhere to evade to, so they'll have to stand and fight. Mm -hmm. They get a, a hit. All right, and they'll respond with a retreat. One, two, three, and take a hit. All right, and can the medium cavalry finish them off? Maybe. Three dice. Eh, just one hit. It's going to be that kind of battle, is it? I see. <laughs> all right. That is all for me. I'll charge into your remaining cavalry with three dice. Mm. I can't say that I'm not doing it to myself. That takes my bowman out of range. I, I was afraid if, in case I got a retreat that the bowman would be able to, to hit the retreating cavalry. So, all right. All right. Well, well, well. Let's see. Let's do... Let's do this. Hmm. How about those? All right, those six. Wait, I can only get five. So we will undo that one. Okay. So we'll move him to there. Let's see what we can do here. Light calf against light bow. Once again, two dice. Can't evade. Get a Oof. hit. We're here. Take another hit. All right. Let's see if these guys can have success against these light bows, who are pretty stern on their own without using the strings. Two dice. Ooh, force one retreat. Ow. Yeah, um, that's going to wipe them out. It is. And they will not advance. So that is all. He will evade that. I figure as much. So, with four dice, let's see if I can get a green circle. 
Yeah, it matters not at all. Now, this came up um, in one of the replays. Somebody had pointed out that we, we erred. Now, because I evaded and you did wipe out this unit, you still do not get to momentum advance. It's treated like an evade in all aspects. So even though you wiped them out, you just have to stay there. Okay. And this one will likewise evade. Ooh. Two hits. Good evade. Yep. Mm. Ah, here come the naked screamers. <laughs> Flopping in the wind. All right, there we go. So, uh, there, there, there. Okay. Let's see what kind of havoc we can wreak here. Let's start on this one. We'll get three dice plus leader bonus. Nowhere for them to go. Okay, that'll work oh. better. <laughs> All right, so uh, they'll ignore one retreat, and then they'll take two hits. Right. From being able unable to retreat, but they get their desperation cornered rat attack. Yes, they do. All right, so... Two dice back. Oof. Everything take that retreat. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. Give me a leader check. Oh yeah. Almost. Um, I will take that retreat. And here we will go after those. I'm pretty sure that yeah, we're going for triangles only here. Four dice. Let me get to it. All right, that that is everything. This block here. Two, one, two, two, one, two. All right. Right, so you can evade, so this will be four dice of leader bonus. Two hits and a retreat. Okay. But you can ignore the retreat as on this turn as a warrior. That's yeah. right. So we will return battle with four dice this one time. And get one hit and one retreat. Longzilia, attacking with three dice. Leader bonus. Ooh. A hit and two retreats. Okay. So you can ignore one of them, but you've got to take the other. I do, so we'll take the other one. That will lead Marius to clean up against that remaining warrior unit. Four dice with leader bonus. Double hit. Okay. So, do two on the left. Mm. Mm. So, Auxilia will throw one die at your Auxilia. Getting nothing. And then these guys will follow up with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Three dice now. And get a hit and a retreat. Here's May Did Tone's press their advantage. I believe they. Yeah, I think they will. Go after them again. Three dice. Hit and mm. two retreats. Well, I am supported now, so I only have to make one of those retreats. Then we'll retreat to the hillside. Okay. That is all.
You better kill me. <laughs> so, three dice with leader bonus. One hit and one retreat. <laughs> Which is two spaces. <sighs> Killing them. Nicely done. Four dice will be your bonus. Just one. And three back. Two hits. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we hit that leader. Marius? See some of those savage Teutone women. <laughs> no. Smacked him around a bit, but... Four on the left. Chuck a javelin at that medium, see if we hit him. Mm. Papa needs a blue triangle. <laughs> Papa gets a blue triangle. Okay. Um, he's Auxilia first. Against Marius. Okay, good. Drew it out. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I am under a cursed saw <laughs> star. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the claps for that right now. That was how cinematic is that? I mean unbelievable. Well done. Uh, well now. I was just hoping to ding you and hold <clears throat> on and, and yeah. wipe you out in the counterattack. Yep. Um not even close. So here I realize the mistake of this for me. Um, obviously preparing for a flank attack, which probably was never going to come because you saw me prepare for it, or you didn't have the cards. Um, <clears throat> so I think that... I did not have the cards at first. I only just got a leadership card um, last turn. Right. I was overly cautious on that aspect of it, and it made me tickle at the flanks, which... You rebuffed each time, and then I lost three cavalry quickly, and then Marius came out to play. So that double time was very, very effective, because, um, you know, I thought, well, I'll pick off a few units. And, and I was doing what I was setting out to do, is I softened everything up. Of course, they're all lights, you know, or cavalry. Uh, so it was just a matter of the second part, which I was not able to execute in time it was a it was a <clears throat> it was a waiting game and uh you just you outfought me so good job i i just had you know i granted i didn't have any cards to activate the the ambush but you know, I, I had all the right cards i needed to respond to what you were doing yeah so yeah and the and every time you needed a well i mean you had the leader in the right place by moving that leader over to the left flank that changed it immediately because that that just doubled all the effectiveness of of your attacks. Having one leader is tricky on this one for the Germans, just because it's like where do you put them? You know, do you let the warriors try it? Uh, and I could never quite get him to back things up so that he could just provide that leader bonus. Let's uh take five minutes here, reset, and and we'll go at it again. Well, we're back. All right. Well, I will go ahead and draw up my five cards while I yeah shut my victory cookie. All right. I'll get my six cards now and let's see if it'll make a difference here. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. As you say, eclectic. Yes. Hmm. All right. Will he make the same decisions I did? 
Probably not. No. So the light infantry will throw some spears. Nothing. You join by the auxilia. Nothing. Oh, there's a hit. Mm. Another hit. They will charge in with two and, dice. And we will evade. Okay. Activate three on the left. We'll go after them. Okay, one die, because they moved. Alright, now we come to the title bout here. I will evade. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so it'll be three dice. Getting nothing. Alright. That is all. Those five. Screaming horde against your lightly armed troops there. Four dice. <laughs> All right, well, I'll we'll have to take one of those, so two hits. And they can fight back with two dice. And those guys, finish them off. End of our brave units. All right, four dice with leader bonus against. Ah. Well done. Yes, we will give you three dice plus leader bonus, and get two hits. Draw my card. Uh, well struck. Um, all right. Two hits. Well. Okay. And for your nameless centurion, mm. he lives. Three dice over here. Ah. Unhorsed. But he lives. Move, advance, plus one. Target those light bowmen on the hill. Okay, they'll stand. Alley uphill with only two dice. One hit. And battling back down with two plus leader bonus. Nothing. Activate three in the center. I was waiting for a dark in the sky. <laughs> yeah. It'll be those three. Marius will come over and join the center. And these two will throw their spears. Now they can either throw or attack. They can't do both. Correct. They're 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 just they're not going anywhere. So they're throwing their sword their uh, javelins. Sure. All right. We got the high Our ground. Range of two, one die each. Okay, so this one, two, there, one die. Hit. Oof. And we will follow up with that one. Same target. Another hit. 
That'll be hot. Yeah, I almost did the other one just to soften him. All right, that's good. Those five. Traveling uphill? Nothing. Auxilia after your light bowman with three dice. Two hits and a retreat, which you could ignore. Okay, we shall ignore. Two dice back. Nothing. A hit. Two dice back. Mm. Hit. And I'll ignore the retreat. Um, can't finish him off with two dice. Oh. No. Okay. Two dice back. Mm. I'll ignore it. So horses up or down are just rolling two dice. Right. Correct. Correct. Two dice. Uh, wonderful streaks. Okay. I rolled the same thing. Yeah, right. But I'll take that. Yeah, I know you will. So, uh, one, two, three. Would you like to advance and attempt to finish them off? Advance, plus one, finish them off. Battling downhill with two dice. Okay. Not my night. All right. Well, now I have one less, so that is fine. Um, all right, we'll start with these guys throwing a pillar. You can take it if you like. You don't have to. I think I will. Um, go back to... All right. Leave myself room for the other guy to fall back if he has to. Sure. There's one die at him. Nothing. Uh, one die from Marius. Nothing. And... My warriors will, will mock Marius up on his hill, extolling yes. him to come down. Come and fight me like a man! Alright, and last one against your auxilia here. One die. It's always backwards. Okay. That is fine. This is, this is great. This is fine. We can do this. They did not move, so they'll throw two dice up the hill. None. Three dice against your lights. Wipe out. They'll advance. Two dice going uphill. Always a flag when you need it. There you go. And then two dice coming downhill. Wow. All right. A hit and one retreat. Would you like to press it? Advance plus one and attack again. Same unit. Now, still two dice. And the lock runs out. Okay. Three dice back. Ooh. You gave me that one. Did I? Or did I have something in... Did I, or, or are I trying mm. to set something up long term? Maybe. Maybe. 
All right. Well, let's do this. Let's bring our brave men from the forest up. Um, so we'll go one. Well, you can deploy on any section. I know. I know. Okay. Two. Um, come over here. All right. Just doesn't make sense to do that, so we'll do that instead and bring. Let's see, he's got four, so he could get all the way to there. So, let's do this. Let's try cutting him off. Two dice plus leader bonus. Get a hit. Two dice coming back. Nothing. Okay. And then Marcellus will attempt to finish him with two dice plus leader bonus. Get one. You can ignore that if he wants. Ah, uh, he will. And then finally, these guys will just throw a javelin apiece at your light. One die. Nothing. And the other one. Nothing. Okay. That is all. Okay. Auxilia going uphill with leader bonus. Um, they will evade. Two dice, green circles only. Good evade. Two dice going uphill with leader bonus. One hit. One hit. Uh, three coming back down with leader bonus. Ooh. Dang. Unholst. Uh, you hate to see it. All right, here's a check for him. <laughs> Tutong, Tutabod. He's okay. Um. Ooh. So from there, he can still influence the warriors, right? He can, yes. All right. All right. Those uh, vicious barbarians will try to avenge their chieftain's honor by charging uphill with two dice. We will get nothing. Respond back now with three dice. Leader bonus. Wiping them out. Well, you hate to do it, but. I'm going to do that instead. Because the order has been given. The order will be followed. Alright, so first we'll do three dice plus leader bonus. And a hit and a retreat. Nothing. Okay, and then finally we'll see if they can finish. Three dice. They do. That is all. That's a great card. That will be all of those units. Start here with S Auxilia. Two dice plus two dice going uphill. It's two hits. Two hits. Three dice back down the hill. Nothing. Four dice uphill, same unit. A hit and a retreat. Four dice going uphill. Two hits. 
and a retreat which you can ignore. We shall ignore. Give me a leader check. Well, yeah, let's we'll see if, if I have to take the... True. Uh, almost, Ooh, yes. Close. All right, so we'll give you uh, three dice back down the hill with leader bonus. Two hits. Four dice against Marcellus. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Two dice back. Leader bonus. That's a hit. <sighs> Knocking on the door. That was a great card. I like that card a lot. So I'm going to copy that card. Rats. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Ooh. All right, so just those three, I believe. Yep. You only need one. That's right. <clears throat> so we will come... Uh, here first. Uh, this will be five dice now for that unit. So I guess three coming back then? Mm -hmm. Hit. And come over here to this one. This will be five down the hill plus leader bonus. And there it is. That's it. Great comeback. Ugh, man, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this one seems like it's a grinder, you know? I mean, it, there's a lot of opportunities for fluidity, but in the end, I had to stay on that hill. I had to let you come to me. And, of course, just the, the, the two clashes of shields right back to back, that's... I, I was trying to set that up to be more devastating, and I, I, in retrospect, I should have just kept on focusing on your right flank and just start, and well, especially with Marius moved over, right, and and start should have chewed up that side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you start rolling up that flank, I was I was starting to get a little worried, and then uh, in each one of those attacks, it's like, oh, of 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 course you rolled the one retreat on the end, so they. Got to evade the hill or evacuate the hill. Um, but yeah, uh, getting the uh, getting Marcellus into the game there to to. I debated whether to put him against that medium cavalry on the other side, or to try to just mop up and get those two lights, and where I could trap them that seemed like the easier call, so that's what I did. But uh, yeah, this one this one's mentally exhausting. But uh, I think. But I got two on the last one, so it was six two six four. Um, in favor of the, it's a little Roman heavy, surprisingly. Uh, but maybe that's maybe that's to be expected. I don't know. Final thoughts. What do you think? Uh, interesting. I mean, you you got to actually use the the uh, ambush. I so yeah, I, and to great effect, too. So I, I was going to ignore it until I realized, oh, you're surrounding those guys. So right. Well, yeah, I I was right. I I was waiting for those warriors to come back in support, or maybe Tutabod to to come, you know, break them out, and uh, that that concerned me because I figured it goes both ways. You know, I trap you, you trap me, and then you had the clash of shield, and I was like, ugh. Marcellus is not going to die from Clash of Shields, is he? Maybe. Maybe. It was a fun second game. Not sure what I think of this one yet. It's uh, it's kind of all over the place. It seems like the Romans, of course, just need to stay on the hill. But we've seen it both times now where I, as the Germans, avoided combat. And you took advantage of that by closing the gap at your choice. And then this time I avoided battle but stayed on the hill, which seemed like the more defensible. So I'll we'll have to play it again sometime. Where do we move on to from here? We continue on our Cambrian War? Yeah, right. as I mentioned before, um, there's a whole other barbarian tribe 
marching across the Alps you've got to contend with. Uh, so yes. I think uh, next week we'll wrap up the, the Cimbrian War, right. the, the final battle between the actual Cimbri and uh, the new hero, Marius. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, he is. Uh, well, that will be the Battle of Vers- Vercelle. And it, yes, as you mentioned, it will it will mark the end of our Cimbrian War, and then we go on to the the defense of the mountains by the Serviles. So we will return to our slave uprisings with Mount Vesuvius and Mark, Mount Garganus. Beyond that, well, we hope you've enjoyed this tonight, and uh, feel free to take a moment and leave your comments down in the comments section below. Good, bad, whatever. Strategy tips, uh, pointing out things we did wrong. We love to see them all. And uh, if you could take an extra second and click that like button, that would be really awesome, and the subscribe button, because that's what we need to see from you. Any closing thoughts before we let him go? Good, great comeback. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It was it was fun. Uh, the, that was a, a stellar ending to the to the first game. So I still I'm still applauding you for that one. That was great. I I love when we have those unexpected wipeouts, and you're just like, hey, oh. <laughs> A moment of hope is dashed asunder. But uh, we will see you all here next week. I hope you all have a great one, and uh, I will see you soon, Peter. All right, have a good night. You too.